Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here today for this historic occasion. As we formally certify the results of the ballot questions and enroll Proposition 2 and Proposition 5 into Vermont's Constitution. We know we can't always look to Washington for solutions, which is why our state constitution has always been critically important to us. It was first drafted in July of 1777, when Vermonters declared we were an independent state. They also made sure it wasn't easy to amend. This process has resulted in Vermont's Constitution being one of the oldest and probably the shortest of any state. Our founders had the foresight to protect our Constitution from impulse and partisanship, and that's something Vermonters have felt strongly about ever since. I believe this is how it should be, and it makes moments like today even more meaningful. We're here to make sure Vermont values are included in our founding document and what, what matters most to those of us who call this brave little state home. Today, the Vermont Constitution takes on new meaning as a source of inspiration and law to clearly show the world we believe that everyone has the right to personal autonomy, to articulate the words that we truly believe in, freedom and unity. In 1777, Vermont's Constitution stepped bravely into new territory, ensuring that all men are born equally free and independent, with certain inherent rights, clearly prohibiting slavery of adult men and women. This provision, which we amend today, was updated in 1924. Proposition 2 once again modernizes and clarifies this section, aligning it more with the times we live in. And I believe this new language represents the American spirit as well as Vermont's. We've made progress, but we've got more work to do to build a more inclusive, diverse, and accepting state. It's up to all of us to live up to these shared ideals. Proposition 5 also sends a historic message to ensure reproductive health decisions remain where they belong, between a patient and a health care provider, totally free from government intervention. I want to express my gratitude to those who worked on this over the past few years, including Speaker Kowinski and Pro Tem Ballant for shepherding this through the legislative process. When this conversation began, the right to reproductive freedom was considered settled law under the U.S. Constitution. This, of course, changed over the summer when the U.S. Supreme Court reversed itself and left this to Congress and state legislatures to deal with. Fortunately, you and your colleagues had the foresight to prepare for the action we take today. And I want to thank Vermonters in particular for showing up to make your voices heard. While Congress remains gridlocked, with many states taking actions to limit reproductive rights, we voted overwhelmingly in every corner of the state to enshrine these rights for all Vermonters. Amending the state constitution gave Vermonters the opportunity to take action on their fundamental rights, which is pretty meaningful when you think about it. And with these two measures, you made your voices heard. So I again want to thank you for participate, participating in our democracy and making these historic changes. And I'll now turn it over to Speaker Kowinski. Thank you all for joining us here today to share in this historical moments in our 
moment in our state's history. This past November, Vermonters overwhelmingly voted to update our state constitution to reflect our values and to protect our rights with two constitutional amendments. This was not a short or simple process. It was long, it was rigorous, and it was inclusive. It was Ruth Bader Ginsburg that said, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. Our country has been through some extremely turbulent times, and for my generation, to watch long-held rights get rolled back has been a wake-up call. Seeing how fragile our democracy is has been a wake-up call. Even with all the work we have done to make Vermont a better place, seeing how much racial and social inequality that still exists is jarring. I believe and I have seen that a majority of us in Vermont have had this wake-up call, a wake-up call to get involved, to vote, and to protect our rights. In Vermont, we believe health care decisions should be made by an individual and their health care provider. Back in 2019, we passed H57, also known as the Freedom of Choice Act. It was an important bill to protect reproductive rights, but we knew that amending the state constitution was the best way we could permanently preserve these rights. In November, Vermonters voted to ratify and amend our constitution with Proposal 5, which guarantees reproductive liberty for all Vermonters and solidifies our commitment to this fundamental right for years to come. The timing is critical. Across the country, we are seeing attacks on reproductive liberty and the erosion of reproductive health care services. I never had a doubt, but still, but still I am so inspired to see that Vermonters resoundingly reflected the importance of this right and the impact it will have in supporting their families, their friends, and their community with their vote this past election. I hope other states will follow our path and enact laws to protect personal reproductive liberty and allow individuals to make their own health care decisions. At the same time, we leave no doubt that, the, that Vermonters support righting the wrongs of the past by amending the Vermont Constitution to remove antiquated language used about, our, about slavery in our state constitution. The legacy of slavery in our country has resulted in centuries of systematic racism, and removing this language from the Constitution is one step in the right direction. As Representative Colton said on the House floor, language is powerful, and the truth shall set us free. I am so proud of the work we have done to protect and expand civil rights, and I look forward to continuing the work to foster more equitable communities throughout the state. No Vermonter or anyone visiting our state should have any doubt where we stand when it comes to supporting people from all walks of life. I remain committed to leading the legislature and passing legislation that protects historically marginalized populations and gives equal opportunity to all the wonderful services our state has to offer. There have been so many people, so many people involved to get these amendments passed, but I want to make sure to recognize representatives Ann Pugh, Coach Christie, Hal Colston, Maxine Grad, and Sarah Copeland Hansis for all their hard work to make these constitutional amendments a reality. Additionally, I want to thank our House Majority Leader Emily Long and former Speaker of the House Mitzi Johnson for their commitment and leadership in getting these proposals through the legislative process. The Vermont Constitution is our founding legal document. It articulates the values we share as a society, and I can think of no better way to show our commitment to personal reproductive liberty and removing antiquated slavery language than the ratification of these constitutional amendments. Proposal 5 and Proposal 2 do more than changing words in a document. They protect and preserve our civil liberties as Vermonters and show the rest of the country that we can work together to create a better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.
you. I now have the honor of welcoming to the podium Senator Becca Ballant. Good morning. It is wonderful to see all of you here today on this historic day. Um, I stand before you as the President Pro Tem and as a longtime senator, but I also stand before you as a longtime history and social studies teacher. So before I ran for office, I studied and taught history, the stories of people who made a difference in this country, the stories of the people who fought to amend the U.S. Constitution. They are some of the most powerful, compelling stories that I was able to share with my students over the years. And I couldn't be more proud to stand before all of you with my colleagues and some of my former colleagues and advocates who have worked so hard on these two important amendments. It takes many hands to make something like this a reality. It took many years for us to get to this place. And I want to make sure that I acknowledge uh, folks on the Senate side as well, who I don't see in the chamber right now. I do see Senator Keisha Ram Hinsdale is here. Thank you so much. Ginny Lyons, who I don't believe is here. Hold your applause. We've got a few more. Uh, uh, Ginny Lyons, uh, Ann Cummings, who has always been a champion. Um, on reproductive care, and Tim Ash, who's not here with us today, who was instrumental uh, when I was majority leader, working closely with me and with Senator Lyons to make sure uh, that it passed through the Senate. So if we could acknowledge those senators and um, give them their due. I also want to acknowledge Mark Hughes, who's here, and former Senator Debbie Ingram, who also worked tirelessly on this incredibly important amendment to finally abolish slavery from our Constitution. Thank you so much. So a lot has been said already about how difficult it is to amend a Constitution and all of the work it took to get here. And what I really want to talk to you about is that we can continue to be a beacon of light in this country, in Vermont. I am so proud to be able to talk to my um, incoming class in the 118th Congress about the work that we did in Vermont on these two issues and give them the courage to take up these issues in their home states. To be able to stand before you as a Democrat standing with a Republican governor, to be standing with my colleague from the other chamber and knowing that we worked so hard together to make sure we got to this place. That's what we need more of in this country. You know it, I know it. And to be able to say that both passed so resoundingly in Vermont speaks to who we are as a state and how we believe in liberty and freedom and unity. So I'm going to pass it over to someone who I know we will all miss in the role of Secretary of State, who's done an incredible job protecting our voting rights for years here in Vermont and expanding those rights to include as many legal voters as we can here in Vermont. Please welcome to the podium Secretary of State Jim Condos. Thank you, and good morning. As Vermont's 38th Secretary of State, and I, I serve as the Vermont Chief Election Officer, today is a very special and historic and significant day. 
The Vermont Constitution is the governing document that our brave little state follows. Amendments to the Constitution are rare and important occurrences. This year, Vermont overwhelmingly made clear that our Constitution should reflect our values as a state. Those in values include that slavery of all forms is prohibited and that the government has no place restricting any individual's right to make their own reproductive health decisions. The last time the Constitution was amended was over a decade ago in 2010. At that time, Vermont decided that 17-year-olds who will be 18 by the general election should, be have, should have the right to vote in primaries so that they have a say on who will be on the general election ballot in November when they are a legal voter. Today we are meeting to complete the procedural requirements in the law to amend our state's founding document, but also to celebrate the civic nature of Vermont and the people of our Green Mountains. It is also an opportunity to reflect our inequities that exist in our society today and that we can come together democratically to make our state a beacon for equity and justice for all, not just for a few. I want to thank the legislature for their hard work taken to put these important amendments before the people of Vermont, and I want to thank the governor for his support of this important historic moment. Lastly, I want to thank each and every Vermont voter for engaging in our voting process on these amendments proving that our democracy and our civility is alive and well in our Green Mountain State. It's been an honor to preside over this historic day. I thank you for that. Now, as per state law, the governor and I will go down to the table in front and we will, I will present the governor with the official results as ratified by the people of Vermont on Prop 2 and Prop 5 so that the governor may officially enroll these amendments to our Constitution. Our turn. So these are the official overall votes for the two propositions. It shows for Prop 2, the slavery prohibition, the yes votes were 238,466. The no votes were 30,335. And there were 420 over votes, 22,734 blank votes. And the total votes counted overall was 291,955. For Proposition 5, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, yes votes were 212,323. No votes were 64,239. There were 53 over votes and 15,340 blank votes for, again, the total of 291,255. <clears throat> we actually have these, the official documents from the canvas that occurred on November 15th, one week after the election. These were signed by me and the th a member of each of the three major parties, the Republicans, the Democrats, and the Progressives. And then we have an Excel spreadsheet that shows the vote totals in each town across the state of Vermont. And I'd like to just, one thing, when we talk about a resounding vote, these two amendments passed in every city and town in the state of Vermont. 